This may be the 25th anniversary season of the Pirelli World Challenge, which means a lot of history has gone before. But this weekend, it's all about something brand new. Revs coming up. We're green. Big boom coming off the three. Two, three, four breast in some spots. Side by side action. He absolutely nailed it. Three-way battle. And we've got an incident. You would expect nothing less. Oh, clips the inside apex. Very racy. This is going to get into side. Try. That is Look a brave move. move. What a pop. This is what World Challenge is all about. Welcome to the Pirelli World Challenge at Barber Motorsports Park, presented by Recaro. Hi, everybody. I'm Greg Kramer. And in just a minute, I'll be heading up to the booth and joining my broadcast partner, Calvin Fish. But first of all, we are finally at Barber Motorsports Park, an amazing facility, landscaped beautifully, but also a very challenging ribbon of tarmac that was originally designed as a motorcycle racing track. That's Andy Pilgrim. Nobody better to give us a look. I'm Andy Pilgrim, and this is Cadillac Key Corners from Barber Motorsports Park. Turn one, fourth gear, down from sixth gear. Through there, down to third gear. Long right-hander here, long right-hander, turn two and turn three. Exit, bit of a bump there on the exit. Real nice uphill here, aim for the towel, you're blind coming over there, turn four. Down the straightaway to turn five. Heavy braking coming into turn five, downhill, get into the ABS, locking up brakes there. Tight, tight, tight corner, third gear out of here. Use all the exit on the way out to make sure you get up to speed. Down this short straightaway, back straightaway here to turn seven. And turn seven is really much faster than it looks. Right-hander, heavy brake, down to fourth gear, turn in hard, brake again, downshift again, use a bit of the curbing there, down to turn eight, museum corner, awesome museum right there. Too quick to stop there though today. We gotta run. Turn nine, turn 10, really cool, fast chicane here. Awesome place, really good. Come up and over the hill there, the front air guts under the front of the car, you always get pushed there. Down to turn 11, downhill, over the top of the hill. Fast left-hander in fifth, down to fourth gear, up through turn 12, up and over the hill here. It's not a corner, but it should be. It's, people lose it there. Through 13, little gas here if we can. Heavy braking, tight, 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 decreasing radius, 14A. 15, left-hander on the straightaway, drops away here. Very easy to get, wipe out off the track. We're on the front straightaway, and that was your Cadillac Key Corners from Barber Motorsports Park. And as always, a thanks to Andy Pilgrim. Up next, GT, GTA, GTS. Stay with us. This is the Pirelli World Challenge at Barber Motorsports Park, presented by Recaro. Now it is time for us to head into our Motul race analysis, and it starts with a big field of cars, 44 cars, and perfect weather. Perfect weather, 17 turns around this 2.38 mile road course, but look at this, there's no lap records because they haven't raced here before, but some of the drivers do have experience here, Greg. But not in this World Challenge package, which means it is going to be a fascinating day of racing. And the interesting thing here, too, as we move into our Pirelli storylines, is this is a track after the opening two rounds that really should favor the GT3 cars. Absolutely, Greg. These cars have a lot of aerodynamic aids on them. They've got a lot of downforce, and that's what this racetrack is all about. Put a lot of pressure on these caddies to even get a podium here today. Now, in those GT3 cars, we have some hungry young guns. Are they going to come to the fore? Mancuso, Palmer, uh, Thorne, some great talent there. And then GTS, Ken Aschenbach and Baldwin rebound from those incidents at Long Beach. Both on the track and in terms of points lost, they need to accrue some points. Let's take a look at our Motul braking zone. This is an awesome corner, I think. It really is. As you mentioned, Greg, this is not an easy place to pass on, but turn five is the prime opportunity. You flow up through three and four, beautiful part of the racetrack, and this wide open entry here. It can be enticing to dive down the inside, but it's a downhill turn, easy to lock up a brake, and when cars swing across your bow, you can have some contact down there. Turn five, it is a challenge, one of many on this absolute roller coaster ride of a race course. There is a look, I think, at one of the most not only pretty but compelling grids in international sports car racing you can find anywhere. And it's time for a look at our Motul Pole Awards and GT Nick Mancuso, an A driver, getting a pole in his Ferrari of Lake Forest Wounded Wear Ferrari. That is a great story. And in GTS, another one is Jack Baldwin, the Reset MD. Motul Stop Tech Porsche rewards a very tired crew with the pole. With that, let's get to the front of the grid for those most famous words in racing. From our friends at Optimo Batteries and Pirelli Tires, and from us, Recaro Automotive Seating, drivers, Start your engines!
this great field comes to life. All the GT equipment at the top, the GTS cars lining up behind there is the Cadillac CTSV pace car. A fantastic partner Cadillac is, and uh, they provide an absolutely beautiful piece of machinery to lead these beautiful pieces of machinery around. The GT3 cars, the Cadillacs, and the GTS contingent roll off and start their installation lap here at Barber Motorsports Park. We are excited about this one. It's going to be great. Two red Ferraris on the front row. That makes a statement for Remo Ferry. Boy, doesn't it. Down from Canada, it's a Canadian-based team. A couple of great drivers on board, a veteran and a young gun, to be sure. And as the Escalade leads them around, it's a beautiful vehicle. We hope that once the race starts, it just gets to sit and park, and everybody can admire it while it's stationary. We are close to getting round three of the GT, GTA, and GTS championships underway. Stay with us. We will be back. Welcome back to Barber Motorsports Park as we are ready to set sail for this third round of the GT, GTA, and GTS championship chase. A lot of history, certainly, in this part of the country and able to enjoy some of it, we hope, when everybody comes here for a nice visit. But of course, today our focus is on the track and we have some very special things unfolding. One of them we're talking about there with Jack Baldwin. Here is our quad box presented by Kia featuring these amazing GoPro cameras. It's going to be some awesome views, a great racetrack to look at, but the action should be fast and furious here around this tight racetrack as we said tough to pass you're going to trade a little paint i think during the course of today's action yeah exactly initially designed as a motorcycle racing track uh, with that in mind it does present unique challenges for these cars especially the big gt machinery and watch that green flag at the back of the grid when that flies you will see a 10 second board raised. Now that basically just indicates the start sequence will begin. It's not an exact 10 second count. The Escalade takes up position at the back of the field. There it is. 10 seconds. This is going to be interesting. The launch for these GT3 cars uncertain. For the Caddies, we know it's great. Well, that could be their ace up their sleeve. These standing stars are really critical. They've got to make it work right now. Boy, it is a fantastic field. Here is a great aerial shot, and that is the split between the back of the GT field and the start of the GTS field. Great idea to preserve that just in case there's some sort of issue. Watch for those wheel and lights to come on, and we will be racing. As soon as they go out, round three will be underway. They are on. Watch for the launches. We go, oh, both of the McLarens from KPAX. A bit of a stall, and one of the uh, Porsches as well. Yeah, I think that may have been Mills, but a great start from the front row for the two red Ferraris. O'Connell has a blistering start as well. He's up to third immediately. Absolutely incredible, and Andy Pilgrim trying to wedge his way in there too. Thankfully, both of the McLarens from KPAX able to get going, and more thankfully, everybody able to cycle through and get around them. That is amazing that they got through there cleanly, and such a disappointment for those two KPAX cars. Robert Thorne did a great job in that McLaren in qualifying. He's got to dig deep now. Boy, they have their work cut out oh, on look this, at this. Track. deep. Brett Curtis running it wide, but a nice job saving it, getting it back oh, on track. Ball oh, in there. The leader in GTS, he gets slammed coming off turn five. Wow, bit of contact early. This is exactly what we would expect. Oh, no, who is that? That is the Dat Dog. Uh, Yo MTV Raps car, uh, Brad Adams in the gravel. Wow, and he's not going to be going anywhere. No, that's buried. Let's go back and take a look at the start, Cal. There you see O'Connell swing around those two McLarens that stalled there on the grid. Nice clean start, a good start for Palmer. He's into fourth immediately. And we're going to give you an aerial look at it. There you can see both the McLarens stalling, and what a launch by O'Connell. It was a great launch, and also Mike Skeen there. He got away clean, and then seemed to struggle there finding gears. Of course, that team relatively new to that Audi. There are the two McLarens. Finally, Thorne able to get it started. And then Figgy able to drive off as well. Mills continued to. And watch Adam's in car. The incident that unfolds here, Cal. Look at this. Up into turn two, he just launches off. The rear fender of Mikey Taylor gets stuck into the gravel. That was a wild ride for sure. Now watch it here. Contact oh. in front of them, but he gets air. That was incredible. That beautiful flared out to the Aston Martin. Just created a little launching ramp for him. On board with Tony Gables, you can see there was air under all four of those tires. Boy, these GoPros give us such great high-definition shots. You can see air under all four tires for Adams. He ends up in the gravel, but he's out now. So we are looking forward to going back to green. But before we do, our Optima Battery's best standing start, Mitch Landry in the Versa Crane Mustang, up nine spots in that opening lap. Boy, just you can see him just driving around people. That was a launch. It was, and you could see all the stranded cars on the grid, so everyone had to be on their toes there, and luckily we got away without any major incident. Here a look right now under caution at the leaders in GT. Here are your leaders in GTS. Janssen topping the field. 
Welcome back to the Pirelli World Challenge at Barber Motorsports Park, presented by Recaro. We're going back to green, those two beautiful R Ferry Motorsports Ferraris. Lead them to the green, led by Nick Mancuso, a GTA category driver for the non-professional driver. Green flag flies. He has been a great story all weekend. Ooh, a little bit of a look there. Way in the back, Andy Pilgrim going after it. That is on Bergmeister, Cal. Beautiful move. He just used every ounce of experience there to line him up. Got a good launch off that final corner. Turn 17 and makes the move down the front straight away and ooh, a little bit wide there but well, i'll tell you andy doesn't have any issues we saw it at long beach running it right out to the edge of every possible ounce of track using it up mancuso down into that tricky turn five tell you what mancuso was on fire here this weekend took the pole position and looks really good on cold tires here on this uh, restart look at that tim pappas there down to the inside with that mercedes able to get around dan knox and that beautiful viper able to make the pass. Pappas has said they're having the same issue they had when he ran last year in that car, is just getting the rear tires to come up to temp as quick as the others. And he said once it does, it's great, but it sometimes takes a little while. We hop on board with Tim Pappas. That is one beautiful race car. Yeah, and watch this. Watch the horsepower of that GT guy. <laughs> slides by Nick Johnson, who currently runs in the second spot in the GTS division. Just saw Baldwin flash out of the picture, leading in GTS. Oh, look What's at this. There? Palmer's looking racy on O'Connell there. That's a battle for third. Mancuso has taken off a little bit from Anthony Lazaro. Lazaro seems to be struggling a bit for grip. O'Connell tries to take advantage. I think Anthony's just trying to get these tires up to 10, try and find the sweet spot right now. Well, you said before that uh, Lazaro, the way the setup he likes on his car, just takes it a little while, as, as he said, to wake up, doesn't it? That's right, and that's really critical. He's playing for the long run here, so he needs a few laps on this stint to really start to show his hand. Look at this on board with Palmer. What a tremendous talent this young boy is. But he's got a lot of experience right in front of him. We're talking about the young guns. Can they bring it home today? They currently run first and fourth with two old dogs, Lazaro and O'Connell, the meat in the sandwich. Oh, absolutely. And I'll tell you, this is a learning opportunity extraordinaire for Andrew Palmer, isn't it, to sit behind those two guys. Problem is, right behind him, he's got his team leader in James Sofronis right on his six, and they had a great battle at Long Beach. Palmer doesn't want to get involved in that. Surprised to you maybe that Steen dropped back a little bit here early? Yeah, he seemed to get off the line good, but then under acceleration, he didn't really get going. He was taken advantage of by Palmer, certainly going down into turn one. So he's going to try and regroup here, but certainly good to see that team, CRP, getting up to speed with Saudi really quickly. While Qualifying on the second row and only their second event with that race car. Boy, as we hop on board right now, absolutely fantastic. Again, video from Look these at the flow through here. cameras. That, what a great track. And uh, this is where these GT3 cars really shine with these high downforce corners. They really flow through there with tremendous speed. The ski now looks for a way by Sophronis. You know, the GT3 cars are homologated and have to stay as they are, but they are homologated with different packages. We know that the Audi package has gone for more downforce than some of the others, including those Ferraris, including the McLarens. And you would think on this track that would be really strong for that Audi as we're on board with Jack Baldwin. And he's got to be so excited after the work that crew did to get this car rebuilt. He said it was virtually total and they were able to rebuild that car. He said, the best thing I can do to repay him is give him a great run, and he's doing that right now. Doing a great job. I mean, he's tweeting pictures of the car, still with no decals on it, just 24 hours before they rolled the car onto the transporter. So tremendous work to get the car here. We're on board now with Mills. He had a very difficult start. Oh, that's tight there as he slides by the inside of the GTS car of Jack Roush Jr. Yeah, Roush having a battle with that blue Mustang behind him, Dean Martin and uh, Roush in the Roush Road Racing, Ford Racing entry, as uh, we're watching some of the other, ooh, a little bit of dust and debris off to the side of the track. There's young Jorge De La Torre in the 0-4, the white Aston Martin being chased by the green and white Porsche. That's the Racing for Children Porsche of Clint Guthrie behind him, that white Mustang, Chris Hudson for iTrack Zone in that Boss 302S. They're enjoying a roller coaster. It really is. It's a roller coaster racetrack, and it makes it very challenging for the drivers to learn for the very first time and really hard to get a good setup on the race car. You're really asking a lot out of it to really work through all these different elevation changes. And blind approaches to quarters keeps it interesting. Here are our leaders in GT. Mancuso, Lazaro, O'Connell, and Palmer in GTS. Baldwin over Janssen, Wilkins and Aschenbach. Jack Baldwin continues to lead here at the Prelly World Challenge at Barber Motorsports Park, presented by Recaro in the GTS category. 
Again, just that great story unfolding. You see, he's now been able to put the lap car, Brad Adams, who was stuck in the gravel a bit earlier, in between he and Nick Janssen. Adams, nice job there, opening the wheel up, letting Janssen go through. Brad understands the game. Yeah, and this is a tricky part of the racetrack, particularly right there, turn four, it can get really dicey there when you've got a lot of traffic on the restarts and stuff like that. That can be a problem area of the racetrack, but Jack looks really comfortable up front. He is looking good. I think they're really going to try and manage those front tires. A lot of horsepower going through that, and on this type of racetrack, you want tires at the end when you go for a battle for the win. Well, this track is challenging, but it's challenging on tires generally, isn't it? It's very smooth, but there's an abrasiveness to it that had these Kias concerned. Yeah, it really does. And here we see Nick Johnson. Uh, they really turned things around. I mean, they had a disastrous first round at St. Petersburg. Got both cars to the finish, but not with the sort of performance factor they were looking for. So we're now on board with Nick Johnson looking at the IBAC suspension cam. And you can see it working through the various corners, elevation changes, up and over the curbs in certain spots. You can eat some of the curbs here. They're nice and smooth, nice transitions. But Key have really turned things around with the performance of that race car having the win at Long Beach, of course. And there is a look at Andy Lee, that Crown 7 best IT Camaro, who's uh, slipped back a little bit. He had that great launch, but now finds himself back in the eighth spot in that Camaro. An immensely talented driver. Uh, he's got his work cut out for him right now because he's got a, a lot of those Ford Mustangs right up in front. It's a manufacturer's battle in this GTS it category. It really is. You've got Buffer Monte and uh, Martin up in front of him. But here we see the two Ferraris just closed down here a little bit in traffic. Mancusa looked really strong in the opening laps here. But Lazaro, we said his car should be coming in. Now it's starting to look good. It looks like it's got much better. Oh, problems for Palmer. Left rear is down, Greg. Oh, it is. He is off, and uh, fortunately, I don't think he got into those barriers. And the thing is, Cal, he'd been running as high as fourth, but in the last couple laps, he'd been fading a little bit. Let's see if, if we can figure out what happened here. As he comes into turn 12, you can see the left rear is down, and this may have been a reason for his sort of falling through the field a little bit. He'd lost a couple of spots, one to his teammate James Safronis. If that tire was going down a little bit, he would have certainly been losing performance, and then it catches him out there. He tries to catch it, but there's no way it's going to work. I mean, the weight transfer of the car changes completely. Fortunately, not a big hit. Remember, we've got another race here tomorrow. Absolutely. Very, very important here. So he's able to back it up and did not get into the barriers, but he's got a long limp around. And I uh, tell you, for this young Charger, that's going to make it awfully frustrating today. As we continue, though, again, Mancuso on clear track able to open that margin up. Yeah, he did, and I'm sure that some of that was traffic here. If you catch traffic in the wrong spot, you're going to lose a second or two very easily. You see O'Connell dropping away a little bit as well. Baldwin, however, in the GTS lead, he continues to impress. And the crew has literally been burning the midnight oil to get this car here this weekend. Jack resides in Atlanta. It's just a short drive down the road, and he's got a lot of fans and family here this weekend. Yeah, crew working in shifts, and the car, the frame going over to Magnum Collision and coming back, having to put all the racing components and everything back on again as we hop on board with Jack Baldwin, this GoPro camera, giving us some of these fabulous shots here. And he is an amazing story, Cal. He really is. I mean, at his age, he just continues to get the job done. And we talk about the GT3 spec, GT cars being well suited to this racetrack. I think everyone thought that Jack's Porsche was going to be strong here this weekend, and it certainly is. But Janssen isn't letting him go. No, actually, I'm quite impressed that Janssen is able to stay this close on a track that we, as we talked about, we, we thought would really affect those front Oh, look at tires. this! Oh, and Lazaro coming up, trying it. It's on the outside. That's difficult to make it work. And Mancuso hangs on, but Lazaro, I think that car's awake. It really is. He has caught him in a hurry. So for Nick Mancuso, the young charger, has he burned those tires down by going too hard too early in this stint? But he's hanging on for dear life. He probably thought, oh, I've got this one in the bag. But he had a big gap over his teammate, but Lazaro is back on him right now. You think Mancuso's nervous. I think the crew watching this. If, <laughs> if uh, Anthony's going to go into attack mode, that's going to really have that crew up on the wall. Nice job there by Mancuso, but Lazaro, yeah, he's pretty savvy. He was not going to let traffic slice him up. He gets underneath Oatsen and now comes up right behind it. And I think now that is coming up on the back of Lawson Aschenbach. So we're getting into that uh, fast group of the GTS cars. Here comes Safrona. Skeen is in front of him. Palmer's in the pits, getting that tire changed. All right, again, if there was no damage and it didn't look like it would, he will be able to continue a long ways down. The news from the pits is they believe that that was debris that may have cut down that Pirelli. All right, there are your leaders in GT. In GTS, Baldwin hanging on both leaders under pressure. We are under caution here at the Pirelli World Challenge at Barber Motorsports Park, presented by Recaro while we were away. The Writer Engineering Blau Pharmaceutical, that beautiful Lamborghini Gallardo. 
FL2 ended up in the gravel trap. Marcello Hahn just a little bit of an error, and it ended up in the gravel. And here you can see what happened, Cal. Yeah, this is coming through that 7-8 complex. Just gets in there a little bit too deep and uh, loses the rear end of that Lamborghini and goes for a bit of a ride here. And these gravel traps work well in keeping you off the Armco, but gets you stuck at the same time. Well, they got the delightful Marcello out of the gravel trap, and we're going back to green, led by Mancuso. I got to think the Cadillacs love that caution to cool off those tires, probably those Kias as well. And we are back to green, and right away, a big move. Johnny looks down to the inside. Look at Ski trying to get around the outside, and he's wide, but hangs on to it. That is Sephronis. Boy, oh boy, he's making a big move around the outside of O'Connell. Can he make it stick? Oh, not oh, quite. Ski gets back <laughs> by him. Incredibly close. Meanwhile, Baldwin for a minute was up on the outside of Bergmeister in that effort racing car. We hop on board with Nick Janssen. Motil breaking, so oh. he takes it in deep. He slides oh, the Contact. Contact between Janssen and our leader, Baldwin. Wilkins is through. Wilkins has picked up the lead. There goes the rest of the GT front runners. Boy, Jack able to recover. We're on board here with Wilkins, and the GoPro camera is going to tell us what happened, Cal. Well, this is a great look at it. Nick Johnson had determined he wanted to go down the inside of Baldwin. Baldwin saw him come and tries to squeeze him a little bit. Not enough real estate for both race cars. Both of them off, both of them lucky to avoid that gravel, but now they're at the back, and the battle is on. Here, that's Dean Martin working around the outside of Lawson Aschenbach. Lawson floats wide, here comes Monte. Buffamani, and he's got the Ferrari of Hedman right behind him, but Buffamani oh. slices through. Boy, that was close. That was really close. He had the faster GT car of Hedman, and look at this, Janssen's got problems. He's got drama, right front issues with that contact with Baldwin. Yeah, that looks like his body rubbed that tire. Now into that fender well, you gotta be very careful you don't cut that tire down. He's gonna be struggling. Meanwhile, O'Connell is back alive in that Cadillac, but he has to be because look who's right behind him. Well, I think Lazaro has got around. He has! Lazaro's in the lead. This is now the battle of a second. O'Connell slides down the inside of Mancuso. Mancuso's lost two spots in a lap. Unbelievable, great move right there. And here comes Sofronis trying to get around Mancuso. Ski tucked right behind him in that Black Hawk performance Audi as we are on board with Sofronis. And there is Mancuso. They're still side by side. And he had to give, Sofronis did. The grass was coming up. Oh, He's gonna Sofronis try it again. Deep in the brakes, deep in the brakes. They're ganging up on Mancuso. So right now he has to regroup. And Pilgrim, Pilgrim's there in the mix. Oh boy, and now that counter move. Here he comes. Boy, that was a great recovery. Oh, he gets hit. Tap. He gets hit. He had the straightaway speed to get back by Sophronis, then jumps on the brakes. Jenk gives him a little love tap. Look at Skeen and Pilgrim side by side through eight and nine. Unbelievable action here, and right behind them is Bergmeister having his best race of the season. Best view of the question. season. I think yeah, that's all awesome. too. Talk about a seat right there, but now, finally, Mancuso gives himself a little room, but Jeff Reeves is off. Uh, something wrong with that car. We'll try and find out exactly what it is, but Mancuso finally gets a little bit of breathing room. Not Sofronis, as he's got Pilgrim hounding him and Skeen all over him. Well, I wonder if Mancuso just got pushed wide through one of those little uh, battles and maybe got some debris on his tires, had to clean those off and get the grip back, but he's trying to regroup here now. He's got to try and chase down O'Connell, but this battle is raging here right now between Pilgrim and Skeen. We're on board with Bergmeister now. He gets the run down the front straightaway, takes it to the inside of Mike Skeen. That looked easy. Boy, that was a great run, oh, but, but now Steve fights him. back on the outside, stays parked, and he's going to get that spot back. And I think that may have been the arrow in that Audi able to take him just a little bit deeper and allow him to stick around the outside. Well, you said they're loaded up on downforce, and uh, that certainly shows here through these high-speed sweepers here at Barber. Oh, and we've got a car backwards. I think that might be Bill Ziegler in the Swisher Racing Global Motorsports Group Audi R8 Ultra and hopefully he can get it turned around and continue here without affecting oncoming traffic. You can see that corner worker. Oh, and Thorne has gone around. Thorne oh, in the K-Pax McLaren. Had a great qualifying run, had that stall along with his teammate, Alex Figgy on the grid, was coming back through the field. Here he oh, comes. Ooh. that's that dangerous corner. That's turn four, Greg. In traffic, it can get pinched on you. He was trying to slide to the inside of Jack Rice Jr. Goes up and over the curb and turns that McLaren around. Boy, nice job getting that drive forward to keep it out of the barriers. Here's another onward look at it here. We got a little air over that curb, didn't we? Stranded car of Reeves there to the inside as well. That could have been nasty. Ooh, he got away with it here. Actually, here's a look for that car. Look at that. Some yeah. serious air. If Thank the you, slower Jeff. traffic doesn't see you coming, they're going to sweep over on the line, and you're already committed to it. 
Yeah, absolutely. Now we get back into uh, watching some of this action. And again, Sofronis, then Pilgrim in the black Cadillac, then Skeen in that Hawk performance, Audi R8 Ultra. And you know, you can watch and keep up to date via the social media on the Pro League World Challenge. First, go to world-challenge.com, the latest news and views on the World Challenge, or world-challenge-tv.com, where you can check out great in-car video, driver interviews, watch this race, all the other races, Facebook, search the Pro League World Challenge fan page, interact with other World Challenge fans, and on Twitter, join the World Challenge Twitter account at twitter.com slash WC Racing. Instant updates on race weekends from the series. Mancuso is back on form. He's found the speed back in that Ferrari. He's chasing down Johnny O'Connell, but look at the lead Lazaro now enjoys. Yeah, he has checked out. Meanwhile, lots of action back in both the GT. Oh, and a bit of a bump there. Knox getting into Marcello. Marcello off of Thorne. A bit of bumping and grinding. Here's how it looks right now. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Prelly World Challenge at Barber Motorsports Park, presented by Ricaro. Oh boy, Johnny O'Connell in his mirror is nothing but Mancuso. Chris Outson in the iTraxo Mustang having a great spin, able to drive off. And uh, that's huge here. He got away with one. This track and sometimes, as we've talked about, get you in that gravel. Anthony Lazaro, once he went to the front, he has just been able to check out Cal. Yeah, he just put a setup on that car that was going to come to him. He had to battle through those first two or three laps, but right now he's in a league of his own. And I'll tell you what, Cadillac, Johnny O'Connell, he's feeling the heat in the second of those red Ferraris. Mancuso has recovered, and he is really putting the pressure on right now. As you see him come on to this front straightaway, he has good straightaway speed. He's side by side here with O'Connell down into the break zone. Who's going to make it stick? Well, again, this is a corner. If you can stay on the outside Woo! and you get help, and he does. Boy, what a nice move by O'Connell. While that was unfolding, we hope you noticed the white flag flew. We are on our last lap, so Mancuso knows this is it. This is my shot. He is hounding O'Connell. Down into the motul break zone. Can he do anything? Johnny hugs the middle of the road. Mancuso flicks back to the inside. Takes it in deep. Johnny oh, too deep. Wow, O'Connell rebounds the over and under. He gets back underneath him. Tracks him over, gives him some racing room. They touch a little bit. Boy, do you think that was O'Connell teaching that young guy a little lesson, taking him in just a little too deep? Wow, O'Connell wow. using every ounce of his experience right now to try and hang on to this second place finish. And you know that that Ferrari, that balance on that car is very, very strong right now, and O'Connell, even with that caution at this stage in that heavier Cadillac, the tires are stressed. He is hanging on every ounce of all of those years of experience, Le Mans 24 hour wins and the like, coming into play right now to try and hang on. Both these guys are loving it though, Greg Mancuso, he loves duking it out with these guns who have been here a long time, and Johnny O, he just loves a battle any time of the day. Meanwhile, Anthony Lazaro in that R Ferry Motorsports, Ferrari of Ontario, 458 Italia, GT3 out of turn 17, and he picks up his first World Challenge win, but look at this battle for second. Coming up, it's gonna be O'Connell, he hangs on. What a great drive by Johnny O. I tell you what, he didn't expect to finish on the podium here today, great run. Meanwhile, Mark Wilkins, after that little give and go by Janssen and Baldwin, has gone to the lead, and if he can hang on these last couple of corners, a second straight win for these Kinetic and Kia Motors America, Kia Optima Turbo Scout. Yeah, Janssen took the win at Long Beach, and Wilkins has taken advantage of that contretemps there between Baldwin and Janssen to hang on for the win, great job. Brings it home, and of course, you can see the margin again, part of that due to all of that getting together out there. And here's Jack Roush Jr. He's gonna bring it home in second, his best finish after a pull at Long Beach as Anthony Lazaro turns it into victory circle. Lazaro over O'Connell and Mancuso. They, that great battle, Sofronis, his best result of the season. Pilgrim fifth, then Skeen Bergmeister, his best result of the season, and second GTA driver, Tim Pappas. Yeah, that was a great battle throughout this whole GT field. Palmer there, you see him a lap down, having cut down a tire, he had to come a pit lane. He's got to try and rebound tomorrow. And in the GTS category, Wilkins gets the win. Roush Jr., as we said, his best finish. Baldwin rebounds for third, but that car's got damage on it. Another long evening for the crew, maybe. Yeah, that is, but he had a great lap, oh. and uh, the lap times from this race will actually set up the grid for tomorrow, so he should be in good shape for the second round here. That's a very good point. That is important. Uh, those lap times, absolutely crucial. That coverage coming up next. We're not done yet, folks.
We are ready to resume green flag competition here at the Pro League World Challenge at Barber Motorsports Park, presented by Ricardo. Round four of GT and GTS with the GTA division within. And Anthony Lazaro brings him to the line. Hard to find many more experienced than Anthony Lazaro, but he has got a young charger on his six. And Johnny O'Connell, once again, boy, does this guy know how to start. Oh, Ooh, they rub. There's a little rub there between Palmer and O'Connell as they slide through turn one. And Johnny also wise enough to know, all right, that's not going to work, and back right back out of it. They want points after he had that tough, tough start to the season at St. Pete. Lazaro brought them really slowly up to the line. I think he believed the Audi behind him wouldn't have the acceleration of that Ferrari. Used it to good effect there. Palmer putting the heat on. Yeah, and that helped Johnny, didn't it? Get that run, certainly. Meanwhile, looking back a little bit, there's Robert Thorne in the McLaren from Capex, trying to move his way up just a little bit. Mike Skeen looking a little racy on James Sofronis. He is. Sofronis is trying to put the heat on Mancuso going through turn five. Mancuso's gapped him a little bit, and now Skeen is all over him. There we see Figgy as well in the mix. What a great train of race cars. Absolutely glorious equipment working its way through the undulations of Barber Motorsports Park. First visit for the series here this event, and everybody loving this. Yeah, this is fun. It's a little cooler day here today, a little bit more overcast. Great track conditions, though. The tires love it. Here we see Jack Baldwin. He now leads for the second day in a row in the GS division. Can he get this one home? Well, Jack told me, he said, uh, you know, the crew up late again working on that car after the contact yesterday, and he said, we tried a little bit different setup on the car. We think it'll be better. We're going to find out. He is leading right now. Here comes Lazaro. He has opened the margin up by a whopping three to four car length. <laughs> Well, yesterday we saw Anthony's car take two or three laps to really find the sweet spot. Today he's got the lead, he's got the track position, and the car looks to be balanced really, really well. Can he hang on for his second consecutive victory? Here comes Baldwin, who is starting to stretch that margin there just a little bit once again over the Kia. And then it is Andy Lee and Lawson Aschenbach in the two Camaros, third and fourth, as uh, Baldwin fends his way through. We hop on board. Aschenbach, the GoPro camera, giving us some driver's eye views. Out of three, up and over four. Now we're heading down into that Mutual break zone. This is where Aschenbach will be looking to the inside. Andy will know it. Here he comes. Slides it down to the inside. Beautiful, classic textbook move by Lawson Aschenbach. Nice. Javis, we're now on board with Lee. And uh, you surprised her that Lee left that door open a little bit like that? Well, I think if you didn't both drive for the same manufacturer, <laughs> maybe it would have been a different story. That could be, yeah. There's a look at Ryan Eversley, an interesting story. That's the Compass 360 team bringing one of the uh, Subaru all-wheel drive turbos over to run a GTS for this event and bringing Ryan Eversley along, a great pilot and a generally a delight to have in the paddock. A great to have him on board. There is Jeff Reeves, who had that great start, obviously, in the opening lap as we are riding with him in that Shadow Works car. Watch here, this is the high speed section through turns 10 as we go back to the leaders. This is Sophronis holding down that fourth position. And it's interesting because uh, when the FIA homologated these cars, the way the manufacturers presented them, the Audis have more downforce on the car. The McLarens, the Ferraris opted to trim them out just a little bit to let those cars have a little bit more straight line speed. We're gonna see how that's gonna play out here. Yeah, and it's really an ebb and flow to this racetrack, but two Audis going at it. Certainly the GMG Great will have a lot more miles on this platform than does CRP, but Skeen, we expected fireworks when they made the switch to the Audi. Break this up, this is a battle for fifth, not for fourth right now. And in that battle right there, sitting in the uh, seventh spot, is Alex Figgy. Uh, they had, again, a little bit of an issue with the launch. They said it was a mapping problem. They don't really have launch control, right? So they uh, they did a little tweaking on the mapping. It didn't work in that first race. They were able to figure it out here a little bit better in the second race. Still not great, but he's throwing down some laps right now. Watch these cars oh. whistle through these high-speed sweepers. Unbelievable there. There you see Sophronis there wiggling a little bit. Nearly lost the rear end. That opened the door up almost for Mike Skeen. Thought about it, couldn't quite get it done. Here comes Aschenbach, he's up to third. Now starting to put the heat on Nick Janssen. Janssen had a very strong car yesterday. Went for the lead down in turn five on that restart. Had the incident, that cost him dearly a 22nd place finish. <laughs> Janssen pounding over the curbs, doing everything he can here. And like we've talked about, you've got cars, it's a different mix. Front drive, rear drive, horsepower, turbos, V8s, etc. on board with Lee. Look at these guys, use the curbs here. They're pretty easy, gentle curbs. So you'd want to try and use those as long as you don't understand settle the car too much. This is up through the final couple of corners, turn 16, 17. 
And if you have to, bounce it over there, though. That's what they've been doing. Boy, these guys up front here at Safron is continuing to hang on, actually opening that margin up just a little bit over skiing. And Figgy right behind him, twitching a little bit there under breaky. Down at Ramu to a break zone. Pilgrim starting to put the heat on. He wants more from that second caddy. Boy, and that's what Pilgrim wants to see, right? The guy in front of you at the absolute edge, the car starting to dance a little bit. That'll motivate you. Absolutely. And as we've seen so many times over the last few years in World Challenge competition, Andy's one of the best passers in the business. So deep on the brakes, he's really clinical when he makes that move. Yeah, decisive. It's there and he's through it. It's absolutely a joy to watch. But that, that lead group has gapped these guys just a little bit now. And uh, they're pretty much in their own battle at this point on board with Sophronis. On board with Sophronis, heading into this next fast chicane through turn 12. Well, these transitions here are something. Aren't Look they? at Skeen. He's not letting oh. him go. He looks to the inside. It tightens up right there. Not a place to make a move. And the thing that you don't get from the TV perspective is a lot of these transitions, these high-speed transitions, Cal, are blind on the approach, too. They are. When you got that big high wing in front of you, tough to see where you're going when you're trying to make that pass. So Safrona skiing right there again. Skeen showing the nose, heading down into one. Can't get it done. Figgy watching. This is a great battle right now. You can just see the front splitter ticking its way through turn one as it really reaches maximum downforce. Great stuff to be sure. Pilgrim sitting there as well. Boy, I'll tell you, there's one of those completely brown, uh, blind brows. You don't know what's on the other side. Corner worker, those flags so huge here. And an equally good battle. This one, though, for second in GTS. It's for second, and Wilkins has dropped back a little bit. We're hearing from the piss. He's got a little bit of a boost issue on that second Kia. So yesterday's winner just trying to hang on right now. Well, that'll frustrate you. Meanwhile, we hop on board with Eversley as he gets down the inside of that number 62, Aston Martin to Mark Lennon, the premier copier and shop car. And he's able to slice through in that toge tuning Subaru. What a great story having him on board here. Yeah, it really is. I mean, Ryan's one of the true characters in the paddock and finally getting some chances, some opportunities. He's a really talented young driver. Came up through the ranks, really working as a mechanic for his father, who's been a long time entrant in sports car racing. Ryan's now getting some good rides. Here's a look at our leaders in GT and in GTS. We'll be back. Welcome back to the Pirelli World Challenge at Barber Motorsport Park, presented by Recaro. Time for round four of the GT and GTS championships, also including, of course, the subcategory GTA for the non-professional driver. Although, as Rick Mancuso proved, you can move from one to the other during the course of a weekend. <laughs> He's gone. Andrew Palmer did that at the opening round at St. Pete. He is our Motu Pole Award winner in the GT category after that great lap that he turned in the race in round three. Jack Baldwin coming back after the contact set the fast lap. Here's our Motu Pole Award winner for GTS. And we are ready to go with round four just that quick. There is Palmer on pole. There is Lazaro alongside. Watch for Figgy two in that K-Pax McLaren there sits in the third spot. Yeah, he wants redemption after that stall yesterday. At great speed, the lights are out. We are racing and a good start. And again, look Figgy at some Figgy struggles again, but look at O'Connelly slices up the third. <laughs> the guy, those Cadillacs are magic on the start. Baldwin in the background looks like he did get off the line. And hang on but we've got a huge shunt, a Grand Carambolage down in turn one. Wow. And it's all, it's four of the key Mustangs at GTS, Cal. Udell's there, Jack Rouse Jr., Buffamonte, Martin. Unbelievable to take four of the same mark out in one incident. Yeah, and the front runners as well in that Ford racing program. Unbelievable, four cars off. There's Buffamonte. And uh, you can see he's got some smoke that's emanating from that car. But all four gathered up. And look at this. I mean, they are in a big squeeze. There's Robert Thompson, one of the Prelly World Challenge safety team specialists. Immediate response. That's always reassuring as well as the rest of the uh, barber crew. And there's Mike oh. and Taylor in that. Uh, he could have been involved I as well there. Have been, yeah. All those cars were close together on the grid. Well, he's a young 17-year-old that, on his own, moved from South Africa to Auburn, Alabama. Boy, and look at Alex Udell yeah. is hot right now. Let's see if we can figure out what happened, Cal. Well, here we see the initial start. O'Connell weaving his way through there. Figgy gained it off the line well. Lazaro, great start there from the outside of the front row. Takes it around Palmer. And then you see further back in the pack, just they all got together. Oof. Yeah, th from that angle, it was tough to see exactly what happens here. Watch oh, there you see, oh, Mikey the Taylor was involved. He could have been the instigator there trying to go between two of the Mustangs. Yeah, and then uh, the number 33 of Buffamani, the blue car, onboard Udell here. Yeah, right 
there. There was just a squeeze play there in the middle of the grid. Mikey Taylor involved. He clips that. The first of the Mustang then turns it into Udell, and he takes two others along for the ride. He had Boy. no idea where that came from. Not a clue. That's ping-ponging is what it was. Here's a look at Jeff Reeves in the Shadow Works. Camaro from Best IT. And did he get a launch? You bet he did. And he gets the Optima Battery's best standing start up 11 overall spots in that opening lap. And, of course, part of it is because of all this, Cal. Yeah, you can see the carnage over there to the right side of the racetrack. So he had a great start and then took advantage of other cars' mishap. Absolutely. Congratulations to Jeff Reeves, one of the rookies in this championship. So we're going to step away for a moment. We'll come back, hopefully, to some green flag racing. Meanwhile, here's a look at the leaders in our three divisions. We are heading to the finish here at the Prelly World Challenge at Barber Motorsports Park, presented by Recaro. Great aerial shots giving you the uh, look at the how this track folds back on itself time and again. Great viewing locations, but of course, we like our vantage point as we are watching a phenomenal race unfold. Lazaro and Palmer have eased away from the rest of the pack. Some of that happening a little bit of traffic, but Palmer has been relentless in that Global Motorsports Group, a Spider and Thermal Club Audi. Yeah, he really has. Under four minutes to go now, so this is go time. If he's got anything in the bag, he needs to make it stick. Mancusa's all over the back of O'Connell for third as well in the background. Well, it's interesting watching how it works because that uh, Ferrari right there, you can see it eases away a little bit on the straights with that slightly lower downforce configuration, but under the brakes and in the twisties, the Palmer's there, and this battle Look at that GTS wall. is huge! Oh, back a great run through the high-speed chicane there, trying to get right on the tail of Nick Johnson, but he is hanging on, driving a great line, just trying to read this traffic, back everyone up a little bit and accelerate on by. And Andy Lee right there in the Camaro as well, uh, uh, hounding that black, black dog speed shop cars. We're going to hop on board with Aschenbach. And I wonder, late in this race, are the front tires on that Kia maybe a little bit off their best? Absolutely. That's the real key point. Well, how do you manage those tires for these last couple of laps when you need good grip, when you're feeling pressure from behind? Aschenbach looks like he's got a lot of speed left in that black dog speed shop Camaro. Boy, Janssen, as a result, is really aggressive on his turn-ins, isn't he? Boy, look at Aschenbach close up on the back. Again, through that tricky section, now down the dip, up over the brow. He eases to the inside for a sec. Janssen covers. He does. He's got a little bit more speed, but I think they've done a great job with the performance balancing in this class now. The key used to just have straightaway speed, not a lot more. Now it's got good cornering speed, good braking. Not the advantage in the high-speed areas, but look at this. Really tight now with just two minutes left on the board. Wow, that was absolutely amazing. I, I don't think a piece of cardstock paper would have fit between those two cars. That is two pros making three with Andy Lee at the top of their game, racing as perfectly as you possibly can. Whoa, Oshima gets a run. He does, Johnson. I think you're right, Greg. He may have used up his front tires a little bit later into this stint, and Oshima's trying to take advantage of it. Keep in mind, folks, this is the battle for a second because you can't even see him in the picture right now. Out front is Jack Baldwin. He is gone. Look at Skeen oh. coming. Skeen's putting the pressure on Mancuso. O'Connell's cleared them a little bit in traffic. O'Connell dives underneath one of the Aston Martins. There's that red car of Mancuso with Skeen right behind. The white flag flies. Here is our lead battle. It is Lazaro still hanging on over Palmer. And Lazaro opens that up to like two car lengths on the straight. But right there, that fast, that Audi is there. He is there, and we talked about it at the start of this show. Can one of these young guns, Mancuso or Palmer, break through right now? It's experienced lead in the field in Anthony Lazaro, going for two wins in a row. Can he hang on in this Ferrari? There he opens it up again a little bit. It's the professor and the student right now in a lot of ways. And Lazaro down through that Motul brake zone. The Ferrari hanging on. What's nice with the Ferrari has a little bit more straightaway speed. That allows him to run his normal line down into this brake zone and takes the pressure off him. Here he opens it up again just a little bit down into this twisty section, Kel, and right away Palmer closes that gap down. Palmer's right there. That Audi is really good on these long runs as we're having right now. He's going to try and put the pressure on Anthony, but tough to pass here. Anthony through that tricky chicane. Here we oh, go. He's, he's wide. up. He's up. No, he's in the grass. He oh, wiggles. He's sideways. He's sideways. He's Palmer. 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 Palmer takes him. He takes him around the outside. Oh, my goodness. The young man forcing the veteran into the slightest of errors. But it's enough. But now traffic. That's Wilkins they're coming up on. How will this work? Wow. Watch Palmer's for just got to be patient. He's got to be patient. He can get his first world challenge win. 
And Wilkins, ever the pro, said, I'll open the door up, I'm out of this one. And Palmer, what a final lap, pal. Unbelievable, he signals to his crew, GMG get a victory here. He's not James Sofronis, it's the youngster. Andrew Palmer gets his first victory, what a drive. Meanwhile, Baldwin is coming through, he is gonna pick up the win unless something untoward happens. Jeff Reeves right in front of our battle as they come through. Janssen's Here's trying to the stack him up. Baldwin coming up to take the checkered flag. Redemption for a crew that has been beleaguered. Here we go, Reeves. No, he's not going to be able to do it. Janssen hangs on. He does. He just tried to stack the guys up behind him. He didn't want to force the issue on Reeves. Great driving there by Nick Janssen. Here are the results. Palmer, Lazaro, and O'Connell on the podium. But he GTS Baldwin. It was a great drive. Really a dominant performance here today. He had the speed yesterday. Got involved with Nick Janssen, but brings it back today for his first win of the year. Thank you so much for joining us here for the series. First visit to Barber Motorsports Park. See you next time.